K nearest neighborhood is uh, we call KNN is actually all the information that you need in 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 the type in name of this algorithm here. So I'm going to uh, tell you guys what it is. And this this is part of supervised learnings and I guess regressions and classifications so of uh, I mean actually I never explain what what the supervised learning is, although I, I use quite often. So let's uh, see what supervised learning means. And given the training data set, so as you can see, we have input and outputs at the same time. So it's a paired data set. That's why we have input and corresponding output, or we're gonna say input and the corresponding labels, whatever these are the uh, data type or data information that we need so we want for supervised learnings and what we want to do is that we want to find out the functions functions and, and function with uh, like like that so function is like whenever we have new observations x and I want to estimate y, probably I'm going to say y hat. So what we want to do for supervised learning is that we want to find out, we want to figure out f. I mean, f is kind of general expression of functions. And in many cases, the function is uh, like we're going to like that, which means that it's a uh, learning parameters omegas so one of the example is that like i assume that like omega naught plus omega 1x1 plus omega 2x2 i mean that's one of the example that i mean this is linear regression right or linear classification problems so that's assumptions right we assume that our function should have this kind of the, the the structures. So again, what you need, what you need to remember is that we want to find out the function between uh, x and y, and in many cases, function f is parameterized. So say it's omega in this case. Then how do you find out f of omegas? And in many cases, we define loss functions or objective functions in, opti in optimization term. And it's y hat, right? And this is true labels. And we can say this is loss. There are many definitions for loss. It really depends on us or on you. Right? We can use least squared or we can use uh for we can use cross entropy for classification problems right and how do you find this one it's turning to optimization problems so you want to minimize the loss functions and there might be constraint or not it really depends on the problem that you want to attack so this is generic expression for for supervised learnings. This can handle regressions or classification. And I mean, it doesn't matter. So let's uh, see. If the first thing is that we want we want to find our function approximations between an input and output. Once we learned, so these are for, for training. Given, so we don't with learning process. Once we that new input x, we want to estimate or predict that's the ultimate goal of 
either classifications or regressions. We call it supervised learning. Now, what is k-nearest regressions? The key thing that you, you guys are supposed to remember is this is uh, different from parametric function of proxy. This is non-parametric method. So this is not like that. This is just F. Okay. So this is totally different approach. And I mean, this is also is the supervised learnings, but it's not, it's uh, the function of the, the function that we're going to assume that it's not, it doesn't have to be parametric. It, it, it's okay to be non parametric method. We can write our models like this and like some noise or errors. Again, with a good function of F, we want to make good predict prediction of Y at a new point. One of the possible way is nearest neighborhood method. I mean, these are the, the looks like looks complicated, but it's extremely simple case. So let me give you the explanation for K, K and N with this. Suppose you measure it like all the all the these kind of data points. Let me write it this way. That's the data points that you have. That's training data set. And I want to know what would be the what would be the corresponding I guess I guess this is very natural or reasonable, right? So what I want to do here is that whenever you have new observation, new inputs that you want to est estimate for the for corresponding outputs, probably I, I can find the nearest x among the training data set. And that's, suppose this is the nearest one. And we, for this nearest train data points, we got true labels. So probably that's good ideas. But you might say, if you just pick nearest one, probably that one is if you, are, uh, if you don't have a, uh, it's, uh, probably that data corresponding the nearest data point might have some noise on it. So instead of just pick one, we can pick like some of them. How many? Probably K number of nearest neighborhood data points. Then let me see like three of them. And we're gonna take the mean or average of them. That would be good predictions. You guys see what I'm, I mean, I guess this is way natural way of thinking for even for, even for regression problem. The good thing about is about this one is we don't have to build the models. We don't have to build the model. We don't have to have parameterized approximated functions. We don't have to have that. So again, let me say that again, for K nearest neighborhood regression problems among the train, if we have one and find K neighborhood among the training data set and corresponding true labels we do have and take the average of them. 
I guess that's, and let's see. So suppose that's training data set. <clears throat> and of course, in, in sklearn or scikit-learn, we do have functions on that. K neighbor, uh, neighborhoods, K neighborhoods regressor, and this means K equal to three. So, so whenever, and we do fit. And that's the result. Given training data set, apply KNN with K is equal to three. That's that what you have. But I guess this is kind of too, too noisy on it. So what we can do is probably, I'm gonna increase the, so that means that I'm gonna take 31k 31 near list data points yeah i guess it's much smoother much smoother so that's some kind of tuning parameters that you can play with right so when k is like that and when c I mean, this this is like again, it's, it's in two dimensional space. You can visualize and you can you can visualize to see what kind of effect that you have. But think about if you're in the high dimensional space, there's no way that you can plot them. Mm. Now let's move on to K nearest neighborhood classification problem not the regression. Again, the, the inside of the concept are pretty much the same. What we can do, okay, don't worry about the this one. Suppose we have red and green training data points with, with, with the labels for classification problem. Uh, what we did so far is that we built models. In this case, it's classification boundaries, but in k nearest, we don't do that kind of approach. We don't have models. We don't have parameterized models. Whenever we have new data points right here, I have to decide whether I'm going to, uh, I'm not sure whether this is gonna red or green. We have to decide it. How we're gonna pick, say it's when k is equal to three, we can compute Euclidean distance. So these are three candidates and one of them are red and two of them are green. Then probably I'm gonna say this guy, is part of green. You see what I mean? So if you have, see, if this is the new data set, probably it's make 100% pretty sure that you use this data point is belong to, belongs to green and belongs to red, things like that. So again, for K nearest, you, for classification problems, uh, given, new observations, you have to pick K nearest data points you, and, and see whether this is, uh, uh, see the, uh, whether the color is red or greens and make sure like probably you do the like, majority votings, things like that. Based on that, you can decide, you can decide. Let's see the examples on that. When K is equal to one, probably, Say if you have three class in this case, and all the new data points are here with red and green and is that like purple or something? So this is the K nearest when K is equal to one. And suppose we have 
so this is another example that I that I created here. And we draw the circles like here, and I randomly scatter all the data points. And I said uh, within the circles is a uh, black, and outside we have just the like this. Say this C one and C not. So it's a two class. It's binary classifications. And assume that. We don't know these these circles that they that we use for generating the the training data points for cyclones and k neighbors classifiers when k is equal to one this is the classification boundaries and again we want to do So this one is, is it kind of looks okay, but let's think about the other case that we have outliers or noise on it. So I randomly or intentionally assign some of the outliers outside. I guess this is more realistic case. In that, if you use KNN classifier with, it's too noisy too noisy. How can we avoid this? I guess we can increase the number of data points that we, when we consider the classifications for the candidate. So although we have some outliers, because we're going to take 11 data points and do majority voting, so it becomes much, much smoother. We can increase that. Keep going, and okay, that's that's that's. I I think the idea is pretty much pretty simple, so you guys can understand. And there's two things that I want to mention here. Probably is in most case we're gonna use odd numbers. I guess this reason is too obvious, because if we use even numbers, probably when for classification say that it's, it's probably so uh, we should make always this a uh, uneven case then if say when k is like 20 in some cases we might have like 10 verse 10 so we are not able to decide so it's natural ways that whenever you have to decide K, probably it's, it's a it's a smarter to biggest odd numbers. And the second thing that I want to is, uh, do you think I mean this is K nearly is pretty much this uh, intuitive and extremely easy and simple and extremely easy to understand and extremely easy to implement it compared to say reg uh, linear regressions and linear regressions and SVM and logistic regression, things like that. Do you think which one is better? Do you think K nearest is good or not? Or what's the downside of K nearest neighborhood? What do you think? What's the downside? I mean, so for machine learnings, we have two phase, phase one. We say training or learnings process. And second phase, probably evaluations evaluations or we say inference this is from training data set we want to build f and for evaluations or inference for new x that's the two phase okay 
for all the previous methods that we learn is that say for example if you have a classification problems this is classification boundaries this is the result out of phase one so once we have function f actually we don't need the training data points anymore because we use all the informations, we use all the training data set to build this kind of F. Then let's move on to phase two. Whenever you have new observations and say it's, it's omegas here, whether it's only thing that we need is we have to see whether this X is on this side or on the other side. How do you compute it? x transports omegas that's the only calculation or computation that we need for each data points it's extremely easy and fast okay on the other hand the k near list we don't have f so we don't have whenever new data comes suppose we have new data here We want to know which class corresponding to this. The first step, we have to pick 21 data points in order to pick 21 near list. We have to compute all, we have to compute the dist, we have to compute all the distance for entire training data set. We have to compute it whenever new data points comes in. So we have to compute all distance. We have to compute a lot. That's first. Second, we have to pick 21, small list. Then I take the average on it. This is just for, for, for single data points. That's the downside of k-nearest neighborhood because we don't have any function f. So each time you build, each time when you, when you evaluate it or when you do the inference, we have to build, build this process. You, 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 you guys see what, what the pro and cons, pro and cons for K nearest. And that's all the materials and things that I want to say related to uh, K nearest neighborhood. Yeah.